Okay, so we're back for the second video and we're going to walk through this example. So again, we have our club head speed, how fast you hit the golf ball and how far the golf ball goes. And again, it's not very surprising that those two seem to go together. So here, let me bring over my uh, calculation here. This is just a Google Sheet where we can calculate. There we go. Um, so I already calculated, just like a cooking show, I did this ahead. We calculated the mean and the standard deviation. I notice I just did that with the average and STDEV commands. Once we have that, now we're going to calculate the z-score for x and the z-score for y. And remember, we could do that by taking the number minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. I have to get my parentheses in there, so I have to go back up here and do that again. Okay, so that gives us the z-score. And again, that number is below the mean, so it's um, pretty small. I'm going to also get rid of some decimal places because that's a lot of decimal places. And then I'm going to put in my dollar signs so that we can drag that uh, down. So here we are again with that dollar sign. Now we've calculated all of those z-scores. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now we need to do it for the y's. Here's the little trick is since we did it, if we did the dollar signs right, we can just drag across and blunk, we're done. Okay, so again, we notice here just this first one, it was below the mean for X, it's below the mean for Y. This one is above the mean for X and Y. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape that the low speeds and the low distances go together. Of course, we saw that on the graph. Now we're just gonna take the two numbers and multiply it together. Okay, so that's just multiplication, dunk, dunk, dunk. And we multiply that together. Again, I'll get rid of the decimal points because that's annoying. Um, yeah, get this one. Right, having that extra precision doesn't really help you with anything. It's sort of just there. It makes the math a little harder to see. And we just come down here and we pull it down. And so here is the ZX times the ZY for all eight of our data points. Okay, so again, we just took the Z-score. We calculated it, the number minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. We then uh, did that for all the points for both X and Y, then we multiplied them together. Now, to finish the calculation, go back to our formula, we just are gonna multiply those together. We already did that. We're gonna add them up and divide by N minus one. So here we go, add them up. Of course, that's just sum. And we add all those guys up. Notice that most of those numbers are positive, right? So if you take a positive number times a positive number, meaning that both numbers are above the mean, you're going to get a positive answer. If both numbers are below the mean, they're going to be negative. When you multiply negative times negative, you get a positive, right? That's one of those things you learned and forgot from algebra. The only time you have a negative number is if one is positive and one is negative. In this case, that happens, but it's a very small number. So there is a negative number, but it's very tiny. Anyway, here's the sum. And if we divide by n minus 1, that's just that. We had eight data points to so divide by 7, and we get that. And we get 0 0.9333, 0 0.9387, or 9.94, if we're going to just get rid of some decimal points here, because again, we don't need to have a million decimal points. So 0 0.94 is a pretty strong relationship, which matches what we saw in the graph, that there was a pretty strong relationship between how fast you hit the golf club and how far it goes. <clears throat> okay, so again, we worked that out. We got the number and we divided to get the actual answer. Okay, these slides are available on the Blackboard page if you want to walk through it more slowly. And I'll also link to that Google Sheet so you can uh, see the calculations yourself. But again, the math was tedious. We took X and Y, we calculated the Z score for X, we calculated the Z for score for Y. We multiplied the two things together, added them up, and divided by how many there were. Okay, um, so in the next section, we're going to talk about how to find the equation of the line. So speaking of all the fun stuff you did in algebra, we're going to come back and do more of that. So we'll do that here in just a second.